Like I see your icon. It says muted. Not the, anymore. Keith. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. What's up, man? How you doing, my brother? What up? Yo. What's up, What's dude? Going How on, man? Good, good. Uh, God damn it, man. Best of the year time right here, man. We just did favorite movies of the year. Now we're going to wrap up favorite rock and rock and other. You know, hip hop has his own thing. So rock and other, you know, because it does some like rock adjacent type things that I have on here. So, uh, sure. oh, good. Because, dude, I had a very difficult time coming up with 10. Yeah. Well, I got a bunch of honorable mentions. So, oh, all right. Good, good, good. Me too. Yeah. yeah. So, um, welcome, Nick Greystone Hi. from Demon Scar wow. and, uh, uh, Primal Scream, which yes. is uh, you know, doing doing uh, its thing over on the uh, Governor, like right there. Yes, Governor's Comedy uh, Podcast um, website. But I listen to it on Spotify. It's just it's its own thing. So it's yeah, just no, a, it's a on lot. Spotify. It's on Apple, YouTube, um, Facebook Live. It's a bunch of other shit. I fucking yeah. love. That Halloween four t shirt in the back. Oh yeah, man, cool. <laughs> Joey actually, when she signed it, she wrote um, "fuck off, Nizza" instead of Wade. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck off, fuck off, Wade. <laughs> yeah, dude, she still looks fucking fantastic. Listen, Catholic, you ain't, you ain't got to tell me. <laughs> oh man, yeah, she looked really good. You I met her uh, just back in. Uh, look September. at Langan. Look at Langan's hand. You can't even see it while you talk about her. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's great stuff. Um, all right, yeah, let's talk rock records. Uh, Nick, you're the guest, so um, before we hit our top ten, just give us some some albums that that you felt really shitty leaving off the list. Um, like I I was trying to like give like a little warning. I kind of failed my my homework assignment because I have nine, but. I have honorable mentions because they weren't released in 2023. And then I also have one that the subgenre, the third subgenre is alternative rock listing. So I don't know if that's going to be like a a pass that you give me. Nothing. Yeah. Like you'll hear the list that we have. It's this is like uh, anything that's not hip hop. Yeah, basically, basically like like jazz, like I, electronic. Like I've put Lord okay. on my list before. <laughs> oh, great, excellent. Yeah. So I won't feel bad that uh, nah. Julianne Hatfield. God damn it. is on my list. Yo, no, no, and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I honestly, you know, like I could kick off with her, but my album that I left off that's an honorable mention came out in 2022, and it's by uh, Spirit World. Um, it was such a great heavy album and I was really, really into it. And I listened to it a bunch and, uh, I, do, I only have one heavy metal album on here. Like, At the videos off that, the one in particular that I'm thinking of, like in like a church or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That fucking shit is so good. Yeah. No, that album is sick, dude. And like, I didn't even know about this band. My guitarist put me on, which he's the one that usually puts me on to like the metal stuff because I don't listen to metal all the time. I'm like playing it. So it's kind of like I'm listening to other stuff. So uh, yeah, I heard it. It it reminds me of like old school, like thrash and like hate breed. And uh, I, I just really dug the album a lot. Um, and I'm a prick because I don't even remember the name of it, but I, I just listened to it a whole bunch yeah, and yeah. I did like it. So uh, that was my uh, my one honorable mention. And the one album that um, I thought that was um, seeing if I can get a pass with was the new Post Malone album, um, Austin. And, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I really dig that album. Um, it's uh, it's very synthy. And it's kind of like new wave-ish. And I feel like Post goes into different like genres and stuff. So um, that's where I'm at. I mean, I like, I, there's a song on it too, called uh, uh, Too Cool to Die. And uh, it just reminds me of like that old like 80s, like cool, like um, synthesizer music and stuff. I like that song. So there's some songs on there that I, that I like. Um, I remember yeah. giving it a shot. 
And in particular, I, I made a, a post about it, a post about Malone, um, where I was just like, uh, you know, I remember his like rap stuff and then he kind of like did something else. And now he's it, it's just interesting to hear this stuff, because to me, it sounded like um, Yacht Rock. It was just like kind of like, you know, safe type electronic music. And I would listen to it. Uh, and that's one of the songs that stuck out to me. Chemical might have been like another one, you know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's it's it, when you hear it, it's it's pleasing to the ear for sure. And you know what? What got me onto him years ago? He did like this whole night when we were in lockdown of covering Nirvana. Nirvana, yeah, like, yeah. Holy shit! Like he ripped it with that. And then th even this year he did um, them bones on Howard Stern, and it was fucking awesome like he had all these people backing him up and like he's just got a unique voice man so i, great, I really dig great harmonies to... on that cover yeah yeah great like the, stuff. he definitely gave it a little bluesy touch um so all right that'll be your number 10 right, so i don't feel so bad so there's the 10th uh langan uh what do you have for honorables if you have anything uh my honorables i had i have a band called the armed which i don't know much about except that they list them as a detroit post hardcore music collective, whatever the fuck. But it's it's I would call it as like alt punk, some hard rock mixed in it. Very original. Nothing like I ever heard before. Album's called Perfect Saviors. Uh band from Finland called Texty P V six six six. I posted about them in the group. Uh, I won't even try to pronounce fucking band name i got these bands from scandinavia gotta step making good shit and films from that because i can't pronounce this shit yeah. but i want to shout it out but i can't uh but they're they're amazing and also and another uh the last mention i have to take them out because whenever i know somebody i never like putting them in my top 10 because i feel biased but uh chris enriquez spotlights alchemy for the dead oh that's uh, a great record fucking amazing uh, yeah. love that heavy shoegaze sound. Those guys, they're, they're some of the best out there doing it. Absolutely. Well, I mean, wow. Uh, I have a lot of honorables. <laughs> I, I, you know, the last few years, the hip hop list was like overpowering all the yeah. rock this year for the first time in a very long time, the hip hop yeah. records that I have are very minimal and the rock records are through the roof. So I love, the new crosses record. I, I should have put it in the top 10, but I didn't get a chance to. It, That's my it, number 10. Okay. So crosses, yeah. uh, the new Queens like, of the like stone age. Drummer, drummer told me about that. Yeah, no, I know about them. Yeah. Uh, so crosses Chino and, and from Deftones and Sean from the band far, uh, the new Queens of the stone age record. I don't love, but that band doesn't put out a bad record drain. That drain record is kind of like, uh, just the best thrash record that I heard this year. Absolutely. Like just killer live band. Um, speaking of post Malone, uh, there's a group called military gun, which post Malone seems to like, cause he keeps singing the song, do it faster. And I think they, they saw it and they use it as one of their promos. Very cool. The national put out uh, a record this year, which I really liked. Um, Tony Molina, which made my top 10 last year. Uh, didn't make it this year, but you know, some another 10 songs of just like pure like Beach Boys type like indie rock. Uh, the, the new Hives record, their first in a very long time. This is a band that never really gets the love. Everyone knows that one or you know, the one song probably that everyone knows, but this is a consistently on band. They're so good. They released a couple of singles a couple of years ago, and then the pandemic hit. But they came back with this uh, record and it's fucking solid. Uh, the Boy Genius record is, is fantastic, which is uh, the three piece with uh, Phoebe Bridgers, uh, Lucy Dukas, I think, um, and uh, Julian Baker. Very good songwriting. Uh, the new Foo Fighters record, their best record, I think, since Wasting Light. Fantastic. Uh, Sincere Engineer from Chicago put out a really good like fucking like punk record. Uh, Spanish love songs finally made a record that that I like. They're always kind of like on my list, but like I nothing really connected until this new record. Uh, and then the last two are uh, our buddies and uh, Taking Back Sunday put out a new record called One Fifty Two. Uh, it's a departure it's from their list. 
Yeah, it's a departure from this end. But the, all right, so we'll talk about it. Uh, and the Gaslight Anthem put out a new record, which, uh, you know, isn't their best record, but th- there's some really good songs on it. So th- those are my honorables. And uh, okay, so now I'll do my. You get? Did you give your number ten, Langan? I was saying t- uh, crosses was my ten when you mentioned. Oh, it okay, yeah, yeah, because I mean, because Nick already gave posts, so we were going to do honorables and ten. So let's talk. Uh, so Nick, you already did post. Now we're going to do Langan's ten, which is crosses. Let's talk. Crosses. Um, you know, it's basically. I think it's the best Chino. Uh, has sounded in a long time. I think he sounds great on this record. Um, he, he's hit or miss with me sometimes. There's some vocals that his uh, that I wasn't feeling as much, but I think he did, this is a nice wheelhouse for him. And it's basically Chino fronting Depeche Mode. If you were gonna, yeah, you know, break it down to a simple <laughs> function, it's 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 like Sade for weird goth kids to fuck to. I guess uh, you know those are my general summaries of the record, but it's You're right. fantastic. It works. It's great. It's it's him singing over uh, an electronic based sound, and like I said, Depeche Mode in that vein, and it's it's fucking great. It works. I love it. I mean, it's yep. for them to come back and do that. Um... And the LP, the LP, fucking was oh. a pleasant surprise. That was fucking awesome. LP from uh, Run the Jewels had a yep. great feature on it. So and Robert uh, Smith. My number 10 is a group called uh, Grave Pleasures. So speaking of Depeche Mode, I mean, it's it's kind of, what are they on? They're on like Century Media. It's like this really kind yeah, of. Yeah, they like, used to be called Beast Milk, I think. And then they changed to that. But Nick, I think you would really love this band. So um, so after we do. It down. Yeah, after well, after we do our list, we're, we're going to make a, a playlist. So we have it attached to the episode. Oh, perfect. All right, good. Um. This the first thing I heard was um uh Society of Spectres. Man, when you hear this, it sounds like it was made in 1985, but it's it's got so much power. Uh and there's some really good songs on here. Lead Balloons, High on uh, Annihilation, just killer, killer, like new wave, but like a heavy new wave. Uh where mm-hmm. where where uh crosses pays tribute to Depeche Mode in one way. These guys are definitely on that thing, but like a little bit heavier on the guitar when the choruses kick in there. They're fucking sure. fantastic. So great pleasure is Plague Boys is my number 10. Uh Nick, give me your next one. Um Cappy Gooley from uh the Groovy Ghoulies. He released a Ramones cover album and it's acoustic. So um it's like you know, like a punk acoustic, but it's like stripped down Ramones tunes and uh obviously Ramon's one of my favorite bands, so it was an easy uh, attention grabber for me. Um, what did they do? Well, what did he do? He, he does a cover of like you know, "Baby, I Love You," "Here Today," "Gone Tomorrow." There's a bunch of like you know songs on it. "Baby, but, uh, I Love You." So that's yeah. interesting. So I think that's a uh, end of the century, if I'm remembering. Yeah, yeah. Um, the wall of sound. So we. Uh, my my uh, my friend invited me to his New Year's Eve party to play some songs, so it's like a house party, and we'll, we'll play some covers and shit. And that was on the playlist, baby. I love you. Well, you know what, man? Like I always love that tune. I mean, I know End of the Century is uh, way different than all the other Ramon stuff, but uh, I just always liked it, man. I, it was a different sound for them. And when I heard him do this, you know what it kind of reminded me of. It kind of reminded me of when Spike Slauson from, you know, when me first in the Gimme Gimme's does that weird ukulele cover of Crazy for You. So it's just like a total different version. So uh, hearing him do that, um, I thought it was pretty cool. So very cool. Uh, I got to check that out. I had no idea he did that. Uh, Langan, what do you have at number nine? Uh, the band is called Temples. The album's called Exotico. Um, they are a English band. I would, if I was going to sum it up, I guess you'd call them in the psychedelic rock family. Um, a lot of uh, Floyd, Pink Floyd vibes in there, but like a, a little bit harder than that. It's a long album, about 15 songs. The, the, the songs that stand out, Gamma Rays, uh, the title track, Liquid Air, really good hooks. 
great style, great image. They, I've been following them. I think 2012, I want to say they came out, and uh, they're a great band. Solid. Killer. I don't think I've ever heard of them before, but yeah. yeah. That's why we're it's here. one of those things that pop up in the release radar randomly, and the algorithm got it right. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Do you ever pay attention to release radar, Nick? All the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's I'm like, all, like I said, I'm all over the place. So it's kind of like I'm not really listening to metal a lot. And I'm like going to different genres. Neither and, am I. Yeah, neither yeah. am I. So, so like, my release radar you know, is a mess. Yeah, my release yeah. radar is a complete fucking mess. And it's but funny. Every that, now and then. It's funny yeah. that you say like, you know, like you play metal, so you don't listen to it as much. And the same thing for me, like any band that, you know, you think that I would listen to. I just don't. I'm like listening to other shit as you can hear. Like, on this yeah, dude, you know what? I, it's weird because like I being a crew head, obviously not everyone knows that I am. When I saw Tommy Lee starting to listen to Electronica back in the day, I go, what the fuck is this guy doing? But now I get it, dude. Like he was getting bored with what he was playing and he kind of just wanted to listen to like other stuff and like venture out. And, you know. It doesn't have to be balls to the wall metal like 24-7, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. Listen, sometimes getting your dick sucked and being in a humongous band isn't enough, all right? With a giant wiener. Yeah, that's it. Sometimes. <laughs> it's not sometimes, all what it's lived to be. Yeah, yeah, sometimes you got to join a marching band, uh, you know, at school or, or something. Babe, uh, I'm tired. I, I, yeah. I, I've been banging all day. I need to do something different. <laughs> uh, methods of mayhem. So there is a group on my number nine. Uh, th- I saw them open up for Alkaline Trio uh, a few months ago in Jersey. And ever since then, I've been listening to the record. I couldn't believe it. It it was such a weird uh, mixture of um, they're called Homefront, by the way. Uh, the record is uh, Games of Power. Um, I'm trying to. Th- so these guys are when people talk about genre bend, this is a genre bend. The singer sounds like he's in a, a, like a fucking gutter punk band. Like he just has that delivery of like stiff little fingers or like something like even more abrasive. But the music is like almost like flock of seagulls. Like it's fucking a really interesting combination. And seeing them live was just pure power. Um, uh, Nation is is a huge banger. Uh, Overtime is another really good song off of this, so um, I'll, I'll be adding that to the playlist. It's just really, really cool stuff. Like I said, when you when you when you talk genre Ben, it this is a real genre Ben, but the songwriting chops are like through the fucking roof. So, home front for my number nine. Cool, Nick, number nine, uh, number eight. Um, I'm gonna go with some of my friends from Long Island. Um, wrecked. I don't know if you guys ever played with them. Um, they have an EP out called Working Man's Punk. Um, you know, it's a strong EP from a Long Island rock band. They're my friends. I dig uh, seeing them play some of these songs and bringing them, uh, you know, I heard like earlier versions. And then when I heard the finished product, I was like, wow, they really worked hard at this. Uh, it's catchy guitar hooks and lyrics. And it really like just paints the picture of like, the Long Island working guy slash musician, which I totally am. So how do you I, how do you spell that again? Wrecked? Wrecked. Yeah. Like like uh call wrecked, like okay. uh W R E C K E D. Where are they from? Um they're from Beth Page, Massapequa, I believe, somewhere around there. Okay, very and, cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they have a uh, a song on it called Living Like a Kennedy. And uh it's pretty funny, man. I mean, it, it's just like they talk about, like, I guess, like the elitist people and stuff. And uh, I don't know. I, I, I just associated with it. And it's a good moving record. So I, I kind of liked it. Awesome. It's, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're going to check that out for sure. Um, Langan, moving right along. What do you have at number? What are we up to eight? I'm forgetting how eight. to count. <laughs> I got eight. Uh, group love. I want it all right now. God damn it. You know, uh, I totally forgot to fucking add them, but I, uh, in, in all reality, I forgot the record came out. I love the song "Hello," yeah. and I yeah, just didn't get one. I didn't get a chance to sit with it. Uh, but it's a ahead. great. It's one of my. I thought it was one of their best records. I, I loved it. It's it's and it's amazing. They're one of those bands. This is their sixth album, but they yeah. feel like a brand new band to me. 
<laughs> like maybe it's just because I'm so off, like a hundred years old or the something. The first <laughs> record is untouchable. It's so it's good. so great. Yeah, it's so great. And they they just they're a tight band. They got a great pop uh, hook, uh, sensibility for hooks and, hooks and great songwriting. I mean, uh, just a top notch, steady band. Whenever they put something out, I'm pretty sure. I, I don't think they've really let me down uh, yet, you know, so. They dropped that single, and I fucking loved it. It's on my favorite songs of the year uh, playlist, and I totally mm-hmm. forgot, so good call on them. Uh, I, had to look, I had to look them up for a sec, because I remember I did, like, a song from them a couple of years back, but then I just really never looked further into their uh into their catalog but yeah man i, I definitely want to check that out because yeah uh, yeah they they caught a lot of heat with that tongue-tied track it was all tongue- like all over but they've been steadily putting stuff out but that's probably so where... tongue- tongue-tied is great um oh, it's amazing. colors they, they had like a especially on that record they had a, a like a dancy modest mouse vibe to them and yeah. even like last night so they did a cover we were listening we always listening to their cover of robin um, dancing on my own. I'm on that corner. Okay, watching okay, okay. you kiss her. Yeah. Uh, Yo, they do such a good cover of that of that Robin song. Bang it. I um, found the song. I, I know it's itching on a photograph. Yes. Oh, that's okay. a great one. Too. That, Dude, that's, that's such a the, great that's off the first record, record, also. That's from the first record. The whole first yeah, record yeah. is unbelievable. Yeah. Same no, I like yeah. that too, man. I remember that song now. I, I had to look back at one of my playlists because I knew I had it. Yeah, but, cool. Uh, yeah, how old? How long ago did that come out? Uh, twenty eleven. Oh man, holy yeah. shit! <laughs> That's yeah. crazy, dude. Yeah, I know. Like the time flies, man. We we oh. were just we were just young kids back then. You know, <laughs> we were just young kids thinking of uh, yeah. of of a podcast. Um, uh, my number eight is uh, also a Long Island guy. Uh, one of my favorite songwriters on the planet. Uh, his name is Jeff Rosenstock, and every time he puts out a record, this cocksucker. Uh, it just blows me away. You know, his, his, he came from bands from Long Island, uh, like arrogant sons of bitches. Um, he was in bomb the music industry. There's a really good documentary on his whole career and like that whole universe. Um, you know, if you just look up Jeff Rosenstock, but since becoming a solo artist, uh, his music really reminds me of like a cross between like Weezer and neutral milk hotel. Um, and then he does like just really great songwriting. Uh, so he put out a record called Hell Mode this year. Um, I fucking love a lot of these songs. Uh, Future is dumb is is definitely like my favorite song on here. Uh, but yeah, it's it's amazing for since he went solo, which is probably around ten years ago. Everything he puts out is just fucking quality, like songwriting. And he's created this like universe of of um, you know he's just a very beloved guy, you know. And so, it's different from like his usual stuff that he plays in like bands. Well, yeah, absolutely, because that stuff never really connected with me. A lot of that stuff was like very like ska ish, and uh, yeah, it was just stuff that I wasn't really into. And then like the solo stuff for some reason just went into this like really cool universe of like uh, more of like an indie rock type thing that, you know, that I really love. So nice. Uh, cool here. Moving along. Number seven, Nick. Um, I'm going to put, take it back Sunday there. So, um, I don't know. I really love that. It's a quick album. It's under 31 minutes. I feel like if you could get your point across in that short a time, it's always a good thing because you always leave some, you know, everyone wanting more. And I just feel like this album, um, there's a lot of personal stuff that like I could associate with. And I really just, I love to find songs like that. You know, I, I text you on the side, even too, Sam, about stuff that you've put out. And like, I, I love hooking on to something that I feel like, like an attachment to, I'm like, Oh yeah, man. Well, you know, I've, I, I felt that or I've been through that. And uh, yeah, I really think that this album um, from their last one, you know, um, was definitely a step up. And uh, my favorite track on the, on the, is the, uh, the first song uh, amphetamine. Smiles. Oh, I love, yeah. That's one of my I favorite songs. I think it's fantastic. Um, you know, I feel like it's just, 
the, there's a line in it that um, save yourself before you try and save someone else. So fucking true. You know, um, you know, personal note for me, that's another thing, you know, like I talk about it on my podcast a lot, you know, my, my recovery and everything. And like, I feel like uh, anytime I hear somebody else that I can associate with, then, you know, and let's take it back Sunday. So I dig that album. Yeah. Um, there's some really cool stuff on this. And that was one of the songs that always stuck out to me. Um, and, uh, I will also say the last two songs on the record are extra good shit. I think the last three, like new music Friday juice to me and the stranger um, just have gigantic choruses, which I think that's what they really went for a different style of production. Um, you know, they worked with uh Steve Ioki's producer and uh, it, it really just like gave the music like some sort of lift to it. Like whenever the choruses came in uh, and, you know, I just got to see them, Last week, I don't even know what day it is, and uh, it was fun to to listen to a lot of these new songs live. So. Cool. Uh, Langan, number seven. Uh, my number seven, I got Baroness Stone. Man, um, couldn't get it. Can't get into that record, but tell me about it. Uh, I for me, it is a little different, a little different from their other stuff. But I, I, I maybe that's why it's not a colored. Not named record that was always their theme beforehand but uh i just for me they're just i can they've been consistent as hell from the beginning uh not quite hard rock not quite metal they're like metal in that way mastodon is kind of you know yeah. what i mean it's on a crunchy it's 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 more heavy than hard rock but it's not a quite metal but, uh, it, the music is like very metal adjacent but his vocals are and the harmonies are like super yes. like impressive i nick did are you down with baroness i never listened to them wow you're gonna love it i'm gonna send you some stuff you're really gonna dig it it's yeah. like yeah i'll send you some older stuff i i can't connect with the new record for some reason it just and i it, yeah it, it kills me because i want to because everything else before it is great yeah. but yeah. uh yeah they're well listen other stuff of theirs found its way into my like top ones or twos yeah this isn't as good as that stuff i would agree with you and stuff but i still do dig it i get it um so the band ash put out a record and i don't remember the last time they put out an album let me look actually is that uh, like kung fu ash with bone ash it, no, it's uh, what do they have? A uh, girl from Mars. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Mm. I'm thinking of like I think if the band name was Ash from like the uh, '90s, I think it's not them though. No, uh, but yeah, this band goes back to. They go back all the way to 1994. So like their their big album was 1977. Then there was one called Meltdown. Um, I don't know about Kung Fu though. Yeah, it was like from the Angus soundtrack, like back in the day. Oh yeah, it's got to be the same band. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, they have that like that song. It's like Kung Fu, do what you do to me. I haven't been the same since my teenage the bottom me. You know maybe what? I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking look it up right now because I guarantee you. Yeah, uh, Jack names the planets. That's it. Yeah. Oh wow, cool. Sick. So they put out a record, and uh, it was their first in a very long time. And I was like, oh, you know, uh, maybe it'll be cool. It's so good. It's so fucking good. Like it's just, it's, it's just. They have a way of having really, like, heavy guitars, but their their hooks are fantastic. Uh, the song usual places and another one called crashed out wasted fucking hit and uh i can't recommend it enough that's my number seven album uh but yeah like their first record came out probably like a couple of years before that soundtrack sick oh cool man you know what that's a throwback for me i haven't uh shit dude i haven't really thought of that band in a long time cool can't wait to make this playlist then yeah, uh number six nick juliana hatfield sings elo um wow yeah so i fell in love with her probably around the same time you guys did back in reality bites spin the bottle and um 
I don't know, man. I've always loved her voice. And the last three albums that she did have been tribute albums. So it was The Police, Olivia Newton-John, and then ELO. Uh, And the ELO album, like, at first I'm like, really? I'm like, what is she going to do with this? And she just kicks it off with, and it's my favorite song on the album, is Sweet as the Night, you know? And it's just perfect. Like, oh, it's, I don't know, man. It's just like, got like such a cool vibe to it. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I love her from the Lemon Hedge records. Yeah. You know, her on Drug Buddy, uh, then her record. Uh, because anytime I go to, anytime I drive by Babylon and I see Del Fuegos, I just think, the Del Fuegos from my, <laughs> my sister. That's a, yeah. The Del I hate my sister. Dude, her harmonies were so awesome, man. Yeah. It just it complimented him so good. You know, drug back buddy, in the yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, drug buddy for sure. Uh, uh, there's one song that's omitted from it that I wish was on it, and it's Mr. Blue Sky, because I would have loved to see what she would have done with it, but it's okay. The rest of the album is awesome, and uh I ended up buying it on vinyl too, so I had to cool. add it to the uh, thing. All right. Uh, so where are we at? Six, Langan. Uh, the band is called Dead Heat, and the EP is called Endless Torment. I've never heard of these guys before. I guess they're from California. I think uh, Oxnard, they said, which is like north of LA, like out outer suburbs or whatnot. But it's it's it grabbed me in that way that Power Trip did. Just a fat tone, fat riffs really great breakdowns again five song ep only but uh which normally i don't include eps in here but that's the shit that separates there's so much metal coming out every friday there's eight million metal fucking albums coming out but these (laughs) these riffs are fucking tasty yeah they like that's all it takes for me that's how all that other shit out just get me that fucking that riff but like that that's how i felt about drain like drain was the same way like to me they're like the new power trip like where yeah. I hear it and automatically, I'm like, oh, this is like, this is the new shit right here. It's got to be like just that little bit of difference that sets it ahead of the pack. With yeah. the, whether it's the fucking how fat the guitar tone is or, or or what the riff is, it's just that little bit that makes it different than the 80 other albums that came out that Friday. I feel you. Uh, yeah. All right. My number six is Teenage Wrist. Uh, which I believe the song title, uh, the the song name of the band was taken from a uh, Twilight. Yeah, Sing- no, I thought so too. But the, I'm me and you were. I don't. Why were oh, that Saturday night? Riff. Yeah. Well, I so yeah. I I fucking said that. My guitar player is like, no, that's um Twilight Singers, which is Greg Dooley's band. I was like, yo, you're fucking right. I'm like, Jesus. holy shit. So uh, this is a band that's been around. For, right, they may, might have some other stuff on here. This record immediately, the song Sunshine, it, it sounds like hum. It sounds like uh failure. It has so much fucking shit on it. And they have like what these like younger bands do now, which I like that they uh, a lot of these songs have features. So they'll have like just a fucking feature on a rock band, which I, I love, you know, like I like yeah. when, when they do stuff like that. Sunshine's killer. Um, what else do I really like on here? Wax poetic, digital self. Uh, it's just really good. It's it's super catchy harmonies and melodies with very thick, heavy guitars that sound like the band Hum. You know, and it's just like you hear it and you're like, holy shit, this is so heavy, like almost like old pumpkins. You know, like super heavy riffs and just like bubblegum fucking like melodies. Can't beat it. Uh, teenage wrist and the record is called still love uh cool man top five here we go nick tell me blink 182 one more time um i feel like mine are so like fucking like uh um whatchamacallit Um, adorable not adorable, but yeah, this is like safe picks, man. You guys are really like <laughs> did your work, man, and I'm like, Jesus. Uh, no, <laughs> no, that, yeah, that's, that's, that's a great record. Yeah, that's a great record. It's dude, I, it's very emotional album, man, and like it tugged on my heartstrings. And I love that. Like I said before, you know, I like the stuff that you could associate with, 
I mean, I never was in a plane crash, and I never had, you know, uh, thank God I never had the big C. Listen, uh, you haven't been in, in a plane crash yet. Just right, wanted to throw right. that out there. Still time. Well, no, maybe. Well, you know, the stars belong to the sky, brother. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, Blink-182, one more time. Um, I was always a sucker for the first couple of Blink albums, and uh, I've really never been a fan of their live show, but – the album always did it for me. And uh, these songs, man, I feel like it's their best stuff they've put out in a long time. Um, and uh, I really wasn't a fan of of the other Blink uh, that was in between this. And it's not like this and the guy or anything. You know, it just wasn't a, a good fit for me. So uh, I'm glad you said that because Alkaline Trio is probably like my favorite band ever. Yeah. Um, he belongs there. Like, yeah, that's yeah. his band dude like yeah. i feel like they were trying to i'm not gonna say ram it down our throats but like trying to like uh make it like okay and it wasn't dude it was totally two different things i know ripper owens when i see him is all i'm saying <laughs> we can no. ram it down yeah <laughs> hey oh um yeah. that could yeah. be actually a your honorable mention they just released it i didn't really get into it that much i heard like two songs off of it oh the new case record? priest oh so I, that i didn't know but i know that my my friend booked them at patchog okay so, so they're playing with la guns which i'd like to see la guns all right yeah that's a good that's a good lineup that's pretty cool but, but yeah uh, blink 182 favorite track on it's one more time it's the ballad Oh, great one! Went That's, viral, great yeah. song, great song. Know. Yeah, didn't know they had it in them. Uh, Langan, number five. Number five, I got secret tapes. Oh wow! Look at you going local. That shit, dude, that record is so damn good, man. It's called Good Grief. Uh, I yeah, you know more about this band than I do. Obviously, it's our, our friend Lord Goat, his son's band. Um, but. Great songs, great hooks, great sound. It reminds me of that that era, the early '90s alternative. It reminds me of being like young again. It's like there's something about this record that's just really warm, and uh, it's got all the you know. Not that it, uh, just to give examples of what you know sounds you might find, because it's really its own thing. But you know, uh, some Pixies, some Fugai, all that early '90s shit, and uh, it, it's a it's an amazing record. Very impressive. Yeah, it's uh, it's got my favorite. Well, one of my favorite songs of the year, which is Side Effects. Yeah, uh, when I heard that song. song, when I heard that song, I was just like, "Huh, this is a local band." Because I'm always like checking out the locals, you know, the young, yeah. the younger kids. Sure. A, a member of that band is also in a band called Heavy Hex, so that's another popping band at the moment. But Secret Tapes is on a planet of their own, and uh, that record is pretty fucking impressive you know like i yeah. hear it it sounds like it sounds like brand new to me kind of uh mm. a mixture of a bunch of other things but side effects is definitely like when i heard that song i was like i fucking wish i wrote this song it's so good like i just pretty and blown away. sleep on it uh irish goodbye those are my favorites yeah um all right cool so yeah shout out to lindenhurst number five for me is one of my favorite songwriters of all time uh jason isbell put out a record called weather veins and uh anytime this guy puts out a record it's it's just mind-blowing just you know he was in a band called drive by truckers which i've loved forever and once he left there i was like i can't believe this idiot left and then he started making his own rec solo records and i was like i think we're gonna be okay uh weather veins uh, king of oklahoma uh what else? Cast Iron Skillet. That's like my favorite song on the record. It's it's just so goddamn good. White Beretta. Uh, just superior songwriting. Weather Veins. Jason Isbell does it once again. Uh, all right. So number four, man. Nick. Um, Rancid. Tomorrow Never Comes. Uh, I love it because it sounds like one of those old 90s epitaph records. Uh which is a cool throwback and um, it's definitely the heaviest stuff since like 2000, that self-titled album, which I love. Love that album. Yeah. So uh, it's hard to pick like a favorite song on it because again, it's like one of those short albums, 
But if I was going to go with one of them, it's uh, Devil in Disguise. 16, and, uh, 16 songs, 29 minutes. Dude, that's like Ramon's like pace right there, man. Yeah. You know? I yeah. love that. So they, they got in a room with Brett, uh, Mr. Brett, again, for the first time in a while. And they had nothing. And they're like, fuck it. Let's just knock out a record. And they did. Uh, my favorite record song on there is probably New American. Okay. I like, I like that song a lot. And Yeah, it's uh, a solid record. I mean, it's not really like I feel like. Some of those, like in between those al- those albums that were in between, like those, um, it's a lot of filler, man. You know, but uh, this wasn't. They you know, like, oh, it's over. I'm like ah, fuck. I, I, I love w- it. I would always say this: Rancid was a band that never ever put out a bad album till I think Let the Dominoes Fall, and then after that, I, I the for me like the, you know, the the glass broke on that. But listen, they out the gate with like seven straight bangers. And then from there, I kind of just was like, uh, you know, but they'll be okay with whatever they yeah, do. I'll always give them a listen to cause they, you know, they got my respect, but yeah, I mean like there was a couple albums in there that I, I really wasn't uh, down with. But, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Lang in number four. My number four, this one is interesting. Cause when it, when it first, this record first came out, I was blown away but the more i listened to it the more i loved it was metallica 72 seasons wow i don't know do you guys have that later yes or at i all? do okay you so do? okay yeah. i'm gonna hold on to it then wait till he hits it um yep my number four is the band called wednesday um i saw them open up for drive-by truckers at the patch Oak theater never heard of them somehow um i forget where they're from i feel like maybe like the carolinas um, and I saw this band play and they sounded like a, a country version of my bloody Valentine. And I was just like, what the fuck is this? It's just like this, the, these, like, she sounded like just this like Southern it's female singer. And she sounded like this, like really Southern, like country singer, but the music was just chaotic. It was like Sonic youth meets like my bloody Valentine and uh, the song structures were just great. And it was just a lot of noise and distortion. Uh, they have a record called Rat Saw God. And uh, Chosen to Deserve. Uh, TV and the Gas Pump. TV and the Gas Pump. That's funny because uh, every time I see that title, I think of TV and the Gas Pump. I'm like, Wednesday? <laughs> I know exactly what you're trying to tell me here. Uh, very good stuff. Just noisy noisy cool like indie rock female fronted super talented um yeah i mean this this band's kind of blowing up right now so good for them that's my number four here we are at the top three man we're in the home stretch uh give me your number three nick (laughs) it's bouncing souls 10 stories high um i think it's their best one since anchors away um Lots of cool hooks and sing-along choruses like the Souls of Old. Um, I always felt like some of the best songs were like a readout, like story, man, you know, like it was story time. And it just like uh, they explain like, you know, like the setting and the feeling that you're going through. And it's always like a good time. And uh, I just I don't know. I was listening to it and it was just like a feel good record for me. Um, there's a song on it called. uh Never. Uh, I think it's that's how you pronounce it. Can never. Yeah, but, sure. Uh, yeah, I, I think the harmonies, Brian's harmonies, man, are, are key on it. And um, yeah, it's just a, it's a Good. really fun to listen to. Yeah, people dig in that record too. I know that they just played more uh, heard- gra- I went to go see him at Mulls and I saw him at, uh, it was supposed to be Webster, but they uh, changed it to Racket, which okay. we used oh, to yeah, be, yeah. Uh, yeah. what is that, Highline or whatever? Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, that I didn't know sense. it either until I got there. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I like the Highline. Yeah, it's a pretty uh, cool place. So, Langan, number three. Uh, my three is Enslaves, uh, Heimdall. Uh, I'm a huge Enslaved fan. They scratch all my <laughs> all my metal itches. You know what I mean? The, there's some thrash on it. Black Death, progressive. Um, definitely, I see them leaning. They've been going this way a long time, like the same way Opeth went, you know, eventually just like less 
a little less growling or screaming and more into the clean shit, which I'm all in favor of. Uh, they're amazing. Um, you either know them or you don't, though. I still have, I don't know how many years this goes on that I have zero friends, <laughs> like enslaved also, but they're obviously doing well for themselves because they're fucking everywhere. But just uh, in America, I don't know a lot of other enslaved fans, but every, every they're year, one of the every- best. Every year it's like a lottery. Whoever whoever you invite to go see. To, to, <laughs> it's true. If, if, if you're if I, you're if you're Langan's friend, every year you get. I the sold lottery. mine on StubHub this year. I just was like, I fucking go. Yeah. But um, yeah, look, they they're one of my favorite metal bands in the world. Always yeah. will be. Cool. Uh, my number three is one of my favorite bands on the planet. They put out a record which is kind of mellow. Took a little minute for me to get into. Uh. But, you know, New Jersey in the house, the Menzingers uh, put out a record called Some of It Was True. Uh, Just, you know, once again, another great goddamn record with a lot of great melodies. Um, The song Try specifically is a a favorite of mine. Nobody Stays. Some of it was true. Uh, Pretty solid. It would have been my number one album, uh, but there's like a song or two at the end that I usually skip. But other than that, it's just really, really good songwriting. Um, and these guys don't really seem to miss. They always have, uh, you know, albums full of really good stuff. So that's my number three. The Menzingers. Uh, wow, we're almost done. So, Nick, give me your number two rock album of the year. It's a sleeper hit of 2023. The Rolling Stones, Hack wow. Me Diamonds. Dude, Ooh. I love it. Um I couldn't believe it, honestly. I didn't know what I was in for. Did I think that the Rolling Stones were going to put something out bad? Yeah, I I don't know, man. I didn't, I didn't know what they were going to do. But then they put out that first single, and I'm like, holy shit, this is great. Yeah. Production's yeah, good. Yeah, man. Speaking of yeah. the production. I was shocked how good that was good. That was. Yeah. Shocked. Um, it's produced by Andrew Watt. You know, oh. he's worked with everyone, dude. That's the Post guy. Yeah, Post, Ozzy, Miley, like Elton. You know, he's worked with so many people. And he's a Long Island boy, too. He's the I guy. Didn't know him. Yeah, he's I don't the guy. know how he fucking even, like, he's a young dude. Like, he, like, just took off out of fucking nowhere, I feel. You know, some people just, you know, like, maybe he was in a band that didn't really do well and was like, hey, you know what? I'm really good at just, like, writing songs and producing. And, uh, you know, it went, when someone's okay. already... When someone's already got their foot in the door and you get a guy that could like do really good stuff that never got the spotlight, yeah. you know, it's like he basically made Ozzy sound like he was an Ozzy. <laughs> right. Dude, it's so weird. Like, I don't know. And like I feel like this this Stones album, um, it's not like a novelty. Like it's not like they were reflecting on the past and throwing like a cheesy line like in there, like how I love. I'm not saying that's bad. For me, but like they didn't do that. They did like a straight up like really good rock record. Listen, and, uh, you're really not you're it. you're not the only one with mixed emotions. So I I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But you live, baby. <laughs> uh, Langdon, Langdon, Langen, Wangen, uh, lasagna, know, lasagna, number two. Uh, Enforced the war remains. I think enforces the uh, they they I've mentioned before the power trip mantle, but like that was a void when power trip and Riley Riley passed. But I think by far enforces the fucking uh, flying the flag hard. These guys is that the Swedish they're, Thrash. they're, they're from like, uh, Virginia. Oh, so I'm thinking of a different band. I'm thinking of maybe Enforcer. Like okay, yes, All right. you are thinking of. Those guys who are also awesome. But, yeah, uh, like the mustache guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're a little. Yeah, these guys are much. These are fucking. These guys are harder. It's it's thrash crossover, shit like that. They're from uh, Richmond, Virginia. Okay. Um, but these guys are fucking crushing it right now. Every album is brutal. They actually they're working hard too because they already put out another single. So I'm hoping going to the next year they're going to release another record, but. They are, uh, they are one of the biggest. They're going to be one of the biggest. 
Listen, once again, you heard it here first. You heard it here. Lawn friend up there. Definitely yeah. blessing. Us. <laughs> yeah. Uh Le- Langan, Langan's got the the flu. So, you know, shout out to him for 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 trekking. You know, yeah, man. those steroids, uh, I believe uh, they're shooting you under that table and uh, it's it's working. So, like, you know, you're <laughs> they're, they're going to roll him to I bed got, right after this. I got Elvis's doctor. It <laughs> shoots me up. Yo, than- I, when I worked at the nightclub CPI in the Hamptons, we had Jerry <laughs> Lewis play piano there. Yeah. And he had Elvis's doctor still travel with him. He flew into West Hampton Airport and that motherfucker shot him up. Because he walked into the club, he looked like a corpse. The next thing I knew, he was fucking slapping on the piano yeah. doing all that shit. Wow. Elvis's wow. doctor. Elvis's doctor's no joke. Definitely better than mm. Jack Michael Jackson's doctor. Totally. Uh, all right. So my number two record is a brother and sister team, um, that put out a record called suburban legend. Uh, I love the story. So, uh, the singer of this band was in a band and they were called, I always forget coyote kid. Uh, you know, they were popular enough, I guess, but, uh, during the pandemic, I guess uh, being a touring musician was a little bit harder. So him and his sister had to move back home um, where he was like, fuck it. I guess music's over. I'm going to get a job and all this other shit. Um, Then they, they start taking around with songs and they wrote something called who's laughing now became like a TikTok thing. And uh, it kind of caught on. And now they're kind of like blown up under this, their last name. Their last name is Dury. Um, And the full record is great, you know, coming of age uh just really relatable lyrics about just like if you listen to it um kind of silly sometimes uh there's one called hasta la vista baby um yeah just great stuff but like the to be honest with you um who's laughing now is is probably the catchiest song of of 2023 uh, with some of the best lyrics, when you listen to it, it's just very relatable, and uh, you know it's amazing. Uh, his one band, you know, calls it quits, moves back home. He thinks he's going to just get a suit and tie job, and then this happens. And um, they they played racket recently, and they they've been on a tour. Uh, cool. So that's it, buddy. Number one. Uh, mm-hmm. Nick, tell me what your number one is because if uh, Rolling Stones is number two, I could only imagine what number one is. Yeah, Lang had said it before. It's uh, seventy-two seasons. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I just like it for you know. It reminds me like the the old solos are kind of back again. Um, you know, I feel like. The lyrics are very personal. I feel like James digs deeper than he has in a long time. Um, I guess it's that rehab, man. You know, once he once he gets there and he gets into that place, then he like cuts himself open, and I feel it's like very personal. Um, what what, what, are, I, what are what are the songs on there that you love? I love the last song, dude. It's so it's I don't know. It's something that they've never done before. I feel. Um. What is it in a more in in a the long one, one, right? The... Yeah, it's like eleven minutes long. Yeah, it does, you know it's just like one of those songs that I feel like doesn't feel like it's an eleven minute song. You're listening to it and you're like, "Holy shit, it's almost over!" And like, I don't know, like I feel like I'm entranced in it. Um, yeah, you know, it's hard. I it's think... hard. It's hard to do, you know, with eleven minutes. Like, it's not everyone's uh, bag, yeah. that's for sure. And that that's that that was like the almost like the internal backlash for them, you know, when they did Injustice for All. They're like, uh, you know, it's funny listening yeah. to them talk about that album, and it's like, you know, we're playing the title track Injustice for All, and I'm looking at the crowd, and they're like, we're never doing this again. But in my head, I'm thinking like, I would love to hear Injustice for All. Of course. Fuck yeah. I heard it once, you know, I heard it once live and I, I it was amazing. Love to. Yeah. 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 Because that song does not feel like 10 minutes, you know? No, that's what, I mean, that's my favorite record by them. And we've talked about this before. Me too. Yeah. 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 Justice. yeah. You know, I mean, um, am I going to put this up against justice? No fucking way. But like, you know, for them, I really, you know, at this point, I, I really think it's uh, better than Lulu. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I don't even think I listened to that into its an entirety. I couldn't get through it, man. 
Ah, uh, yeah, no, it's uh, yeah. I I don't that's even think shit. I don't even think Lou Reed can get through it. And I feel I don't yeah. want to be morbid, but I could feel like this could be a final Metallica album, and I'd be content with it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's one of those things. Like, what else could they possibly do after this? I don't know. Great, great, like it's like a, great album. Arguably the worst album cover ever I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it's not like that. <laughs> but other other it's a weird design. Other than but it's that, it's one of their uh, the better latter Metallica records for sure, and like. Uh, I think James sounds really good on it because for a long time, James sound, you know, with what he did to his voice, his vocal cords from touring so much and stuff like that. Like he had some really cracky, pitchy shit at some points. You know what I mean? Like, like Lars, I always said Lars caught all the, all the smoke for the St. Anger snare sound, but James sounded like terrible singing on that record. I thought, you know what I mean? I don't think he sounded good at all, but like songs like "Screaming Suicide," I think is one of the best vocals. He sound he sounds so good on that fucking song, and uh, the this this record too for me. Why I ranked it? I I had such a good year with my son getting into them and going to see Metallica with them. And here's this band that was so important to me, you know, in the late eighties and stuff, going to high school, and then I kind of fell out with them and kind of coming back to them. It was just like a a great mu- music moment for me and sure. um and also how i listen to it a lot which the active listening i had with it which is something i realized i don't do enough of like sometimes with all the spotify and you hear shit and you next week and new we stuff have, comes yeah, out, we have yeah we have too much i, I listen to this a lot you know what I mean? And that's how I would have listened to their records back in the day, because I would have went a half hour to Riverhead to Record World to get one record, and I sat with it for a fucking month before I could go back. So I listened to it a lot, yeah. and I liked it. And I'm like, maybe I don't do this enough with a lot of shit that comes out. You You're know? right, man. You're 100% right. Are you, are you telling, are you telling me that I should do that with Enslaved? Is that what you're trying to tell me? I feel like that's I feel what like, this whole show has been about. <laughs> I've been trying to bring it back to that. I feel like that's what you're trying to tell me with those eyes. Over there. <laughs> yeah, but anything, you know what I mean? Do we listen to shit enough? You know what I mean? Or is it just always on in the background? But I, I really intensely listening to it was 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 a positive experience. And uh, when did it come out? Like in the beginning of the summer or April? Like, right? Was it April? I think. I don't remember. All right. Yeah. I feel, so. I, I like listened to it throughout guessing. the summer. I know that for yeah. sure. Lux yeah. Parade just came out a long time ago. That's what I feel for sure. Yeah, well, they were they were doing that. You yeah, know, yeah, they dropped. Letting out a single here and there for a few, for a while. But uh, uh, yeah, great record. But let me get my number one. Uh, the Ver- the Attack. Am I per saying that right? Oh, uh, I think it's Verlatek, actually. Verlatek, the K yeah. is silent. I think so. You know who I'm talking about, though. And yeah. the album's called Endling. Uh, State of the art, tight as fuck Norwegian band who effortlessly shifts musical gears, sometimes within the same song. I've heard these guys even do so much different shit. There's some of it sounds like uh, can be almost like black metal or death metal vocal styles, but it's, or some of it's like a Turbo Negro, but fucking way heavier. Um, it would be a good example, but I loved everything these guys put out, and even like that one. Remember that song, 1985 or whatever? I, I loved it. Like Lamb so, Riff. So they, that's they're all over the place, and that was like easily like what eight years ago, yeah, yeah. Um, and my I, I remember the disconnect for me, and uh, I told our friend Johnny North, uh, because he loved that record too. I was like, I just I, I don't understand what he's singing, so it's hard for me to like really connect with it. Yeah, yeah and yeah. everyone laughed at me. I was just like, I don't know, he's like singing in another language, I don't know what he's saying. But 1985 sounded cool. I'm like, all right, whatever. The video is whatever. So, kind of when it's like this and some of these other bands, I just the the vo- the the vocals are just an instrument to me. I don't know what the fuck they're saying, but if it's complimenting what's going on, I can just roll with it. That's kind of how I've like grown to accept it if they're singing in another language or whatnot. Yeah. Mm. But it's a great, it's a great record and like fucking fantastic. Well, that brings it down to me. Uh, let's see, motherfucker. Uh, so one of my favorite bands ever put out a record and they, they seem to put out a record. Uh, Sam, I am 
is is the band stowaway is the the album and they're like one of like you know when you talk about our band in particular they're one of my biggest songwriting influences i love that band um uh, so they put out a record. It seems to me like almost once every eight years. <laughs> it's a big deal whenever they do it. Uh, this was their first album, and God damn it! So 2011, I guess 12 years. You know, wow. uh, but it's it's a masterpiece. Again, crystallized lights out little hustler. Beginning to end, it's just fucking banging. It's got the imperfect, and it's my favorite rock album of 2023 and i listened to it a bunch because there's 12 songs but it's only 34 minutes long and uh it's killer it's just it's the dna that i come from um i remember when i the first time i I heard the band was probably 2000 they they put out a record called astray and it was everything that i loved about music it was just these these really cool interesting guitars with really cool, interesting melodies, and the music was heavy, and the 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 melodies were super hooky and catchy, and it was just something that you know from that moment on, I'm like, this is what I want to do, you know. It was like when I heard like Quicksand or things like that, where it's like, okay, you have this riff and these really cool guitar parts, but the the hook is so gigantic. Uh, that's it, man. My love is Sam. I am. Everyone knows Stowaway, fantastic album, number one rock record of the goddamn year and uh we've said it all right said it all we've said it all um nick thanks for hanging out with us yeah man yeah, thank man. you no, thank you for uh thinking of me and bringing me back man i had fun absolutely um you know we will continue to listen to primal scream thank you with, very much uh with nick graystone uh where you listen to podcasts uh what i like about your show is you talk about everything very topical. So anything that happens and then you'll throw in some like metal and some horror and some like a lot of local stuff, a lot of local love on his podcast too, which I love. So, uh, man, I can't keep that scene alive. You know, I can't wait to see you in person and, uh, we'll hang. So that's it guys. Cool. Later guys. Awesome. Feel better. Langan.